Hello, my name is Bettina Davies and my husband Trevor is behind the camera. You'll see him later on. And we've been growing cut flowers for sale for the last six years. Um, and so we've been asked to put together this, this little video for the Flower Farmers Big Weekend. And it's, it focuses on our five top tips for, um, on what to look out for when you're looking for land um, to grow flowers on. Because obviously we've made some mistakes along the way and we've, we've learned the hard way. So just trying to pass on our sort of findings that we, we gathered from this journey. So very excitingly, six weeks ago, we moved to a brand new site in, um, on the, the Gower Peninsula in South Wales. So Trevor's just doing a little pan, showing you our new site, um, which is just over five acres. Um, beautiful south facing field um, on Gower. Um, so obviously not that much to see yet. We're just preparing. We're, we're going to um, use no dig cultivation here so it's all kind of waiting to happen um, so flowers next year um, so this this move to this site is very much connected to our number one top tip that we would give to anyone that is looking for land to grow flowers on which is um, try to live on your land try to live where you work and where you grow or if that's not possible as really really as close as you possibly can so on our previous um in our previous location that wasn't possible because we just couldn't afford buying um, in that location which was Hertfordshire so close to London we weren't in a position to buy a house with or a small existing small holding with a lot of acreage so we in the end through various mishaps or that's just how it worked out we ended up with two separate sites um, which was about a 14 mile round trip from our house which is obviously it can be done um, but it's extremely exhausting, um, it's not efficient, it's very annoying if you forget something at home um, when you're out in the field. Uh, it's not eco-friendly because you're driving around all the time. It's expensive, so it's if, if you possibly can, just spare yourself all that trouble, um, which might in the end mean you moving closer to your site so for example if someone offers you a field you know that that you could buy even try to move yourself as close to your growing site as you possibly can so that's tip number one tip number two relates to the size of your field and um, so what we found with in our old location is that actually ultimately in order to really make a living from it we didn't have enough land so we were farming on just over half an acre and we're doing, we were doing a lot of the value added stuff. So we were providing flowers and I did the floristry for weddings and funerals and events. We sold some flowers wholesale to florists. So we were really trying to sell everything we grew, but we just found, um, I mean, also because our overheads, etc., etc., were quite big. Um, it just actually, in the end, that acreage didn't generate enough income for us. So based on that learning experience, we would say number two top tip. Um, if you're trying, if you're having a business model that is similar to ours, where you're a grower stroke florist, so you grow most of your own flowers for your own work, you're trying to avoid buying in a lot of flowers you need at least an acre of land to really just make it worth your while okay now for tip number three i'm going to pass over to trevor tip number three have a look at the soil dig into it see if there are any worms see if it's clay see if it's sand it'll never be perfect but it can be a lot better or a lot worse um, both of our places were problematic. The first was clay and flint, and the second was sand and flint. Um, and we managed to, you know, have very good production from both those places, but it meant raised beds. It meant bringing in tons of organic matter uh, in order to provide the nutrients and the the um, the, top, the compost, the texture of the soil, to allow things to root properly and all that. So if you can find something with good soil. You've, you've really hit on something, take it. 
So that's the earth. Don't ever start growing someplace where there's no water, which we also did on the first site that we were at. Uh, I won't tell you the whole story, but make sure that there's access to water. Um, otherwise, you're, you'll spend so much of your time just carrying water around in the back of your car. Right? Don't do it. <laughs> so, you've got the soil, the earth sorted, and you've got the water sorted. We were on a one of our sites, the first site, was on a ridge in the Chilterns, uh, very windy, winds upward of 55 miles an hour, several times a, a year actually, and that's not great for the flowers. So we had the expense of um, hanging artificial uh, windbreak material on our deer proof fence, which is another story, um, which was very effective, and we also planted and grew successfully a, a very nice hedgerow which protected us from the other side. Um, it's kind of permaculture really, you want to go to the place and really look and see what it is. What is there? What is the earth? What is the water? What is the the, 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 um, the overall picture of it? What's the drainage? Where where does it go to? Where does it come from? Um, you know, and, and from there, if you can find some place in yourself where you can see how it comes together, then you've got a place to start. And then, of course, you start spending money and time, and it's lovely. Bettina. So, um, they've asked us to keep this quite short, and we've probably already gone, gone over our allotted time, but we've <coughs> got lots more tips to share, potentially, if anyone wants to ask us about our experiences, or, yeah, ask about their specific um, circumstances so by all means please get in touch and we're happy to share you know to to help um, if we can wherever we can um, just write to us at info at gillyflower.org.uk that's g-i-l-l-y flower all one word dot org dot uk good luck good luck bye bye